everyone's just they're, they're having a good time. I love I love the I mean, Hachiman lock in, but I will say this, Charlie, all of any any side of him just yet. Yep. The wargs are going to put course with that Discordia passive. Not really depends on what Julio wants, and it looks like Era a run for their money. Wow. Unkillable. Warrior Jerry Kali, simply not going to care, just going to pop that. Papio, I'm willing to give him the benefit of the doubt. I've had personal experience playing against him for a good long time. Davey, are you good? Oh my, the shell gets popped. I don't think he would have been good. Is he good? Oh, no, he's man. good. He's uh, it just feels like this god is struggles in the laning phase, as example here. Preds now on the retreat should be able to work his way back. You gotta find opportunities, and I think those really only do reside in the duo. Another rotation towards this left hand side. Rapio and Preds on to Kha'Zix to start this one off, but will be able to hold on to the dash here and stun Rapio out. So, racket with those SPL teams. Things slow down. Nobody wants to be the first one to step up and make a mistake. It might have been Preds here to lose the ultimate. In exchange, at least be late to this one. It'll be Rapio and Gunter that have the pressure on this point just to start things off. But Johnny hesitating on whether or not he wants to step in, and he may get flanked. Davy and Preds both rotating over to this one. Davy rolling in as well. Aggressive wants to start this one. And Kha'Zix with a triple stun. And the soul laners come over as well. Early fight brings all five members in. And the destruction is there just to get Johnny out safely. And will navigate him towards that red buff. Rapio now in on to Spudio. Will force him towards the green buff. But it's consistent positioning here for the works. They force the Mambo back. And they are looking to secure this beacon. Yeah. It's a little bit of offense early and then maybe going into a more tanky build after the fact. Yeah, it could be that he's got Bruiser on the mind. Pyromancer burned down to about 30% HP, but it's the fight they're after. Yeah, Pyromancer low and the wards will secure it. Hex Mambo hesitant to step up and fully engage, just once again playing on the outskirts of this one as Davey gets poked down and Preds may be caught in a little bit of a rough spot as well. Into the build around Rapio, Vital Amplifier just makes sense to me. You're going to proc that heal regardless. The second ability giving over uh, ability healing to both your first and third abilities means it's always going to be there. Oh my goodness, Kana being taken out lower than I expected. But on the other side, Whoa. these execute targets are dangerous. Rapio is dealing significantly more damage than it looked like they were ready for. Didn't even get a ch And you're dead for 40 seconds. Could be Fire Giant, and it could just be the game. Could be the Gold Fury here. That gets picked up by the Wargs. And they're on already down to half HP. Kha'Zix and Spudio in range. And Hawk looking to get here as well. But the Soul Laner is here. And Kana is forced Spudio out. And the Gold Fury will get taken down before Mambo get a chance to react. The, the hard CC of Julio. Great on knockup. Great on aggression. Maybe hard to do to peel. Sitching Beacon once again. And Kha'Zix is the engage target off the bat. Has to run away. And now it's Johnny who's in on the back line with Julio. And forced into the barrage is Davey. But the shell and the ultimate comes through. Almost saves the life. But Julio grabs the first blood for the Mambo. And forces the works back under the Tier 1 tower. They've taken positioning. And it looks like they'll take the beacon. I can't believe Johnny gets away with that. Getting into the back line as Kali, difficult with ultimate. Has ultimate, doesn't even need to use it, and the fight continues. A TP in from Kana. On his back, and Spudio Aegis gets forced. He doesn't have the ultimate anymore, but he doesn't need it. I'll get the dash out, and this beacon once again flips the other way, but Kha'Zix and Spudio still have the health to contest, and nobody will stay from the works. It's once again the Hex Mambo, who have remained here on the positioning. Looks like they will grab the beacon and grab the first blood. So, a small win for Hexors. Someone needs to make Johnny think, uh, like, consider whether or not it's a good idea to actually be diving. And if he's not taking any damage, it's always a good idea. Pyromancer pulled, dropped low and confirmed by the Niflheim War in 10 6. The Bewitched Dagger. Okay, so this is essentially just the Witchblade on top of a standard Relic Dagger. I think a smart decision to go ahead and deal with some of the attack speed on the side of Mambo. Kana, no hesitation, burns the beads on a Spudio, but it's Julio in the back line, and the Execute is off the mark, and that makes room for Johnny to get in on his own. He finds the engage and forces the other Soul Laner out as well, but the ultimates have been burned, and the Oni Fury still picked up by the Wargs. Hesitation on the second half of this engagement, though, and Johnny is still behind. Critical positioning here, and the 
the ultimate, the safety tools have been used, but the peel comes out, Preds with a huge stun, but Rapio dove too far and gets caught out by Spuddy. Okana is trapped as well as Johnny finds the ADC, a two for one thus far, make it three. If they finish off Kana, it'll be a double kill for Spudio and Hex Mambo once again find themselves winning a fight. Look, I know it's not Johnny doing the damage. I know it's not that, but I, I have to talk about his positioning that team fight because we saw it. The Niflheim Wargs on their siege forward, Rapio leading the charge, and then there was just a distinct moment. One second where the Niflheim Wargs look behind them and say, oh no, jo Johnny's behind us and it completely crushed every bit of momentum that they had. They mm -hmm. stop in their tracks and say, well, we can't keep moving forward. Rapio says, oh, I'm stuck up here, loses his life, and now you're caught in this weird middle ground of, it's a good fight. Might keep you guessing on whether or not this is a good engagement. Niflheim works, though, like their odds. No beads or agus in either of the carries for Mambo. They grouped around the Pyromancer, and it will get channeled here, potentially looking for a coin flip, and... The damage getting put out from Hex Mambo makes them hesitate for an extra second, Oof. and naturally, that's when it gets stolen away. I think that was the Hev's third Stygian Beacon, and, and, and the Titans pushing. This is going to get to a Siege territory. Could be. Julio in some trouble here. Instant Channel, the Somersault Cloud, doesn't want to leave it up to risk. Will lose out on his own safety, but at the end of the day, Sun Wukong's got plenty inherently in the base kit outside of the ultimate. Niflheim Wargs. Starting to feel the pressure. Whoa. Step forward, blink from Kana, stun off the mark. It's Kha'Zix in the back. He's in the back, and he channels ultimate onto five, but he dashes in, and who is it but Johnny in the back line, channeling destruction and chasing after Gunter, but he has to jump out. He cannot find the pick he needed, and it's Kha'Zix and Julio pushing forward onto the rest of the wargs. No, no kills found. So the Niflheim wargs realize, looking at Johnny, Maybe a good idea in the next couple of fights. And oh, my. Hex Mamba, I don't think they're aware of this. Fire Giant pulled by the Warg. Sure, you got the beacon, but can you get there in time? Julio turns the corner. That should be it. They know that it's coming, and they do have the runic bombs in the pocket. They might look for the weighted coin flip. Julio's in the field. It's getting low, and the Wargs secure the Fire Giants and are now on their way out. Kano will fall in return. Yikes. They'll hope to keep as many alive as possible. The support falls as well. A two for zero Johnny. for the unenhanced Fire Giant. But Johnny, looking to make it more, will not dive past side. It's a five-man stack from the Niflheim Wargs, nearly able to spring a trap on a Kha'Zix on rotation in. Rx Mambo willing to fight into a triple fire giant team for a Primal Fury. Gold lead's so massive for Mambo that even if they lost this, wouldn't be a massive swing for the Wargs. But I suppose if the gold lead's massive, there's no reason to give it up either. Primal Fury reset just by Hex Mambo showing face. Keep your eyes on Rapio, though. He's going to round the edge of the team fight. Both of these junglers have the critical positioning. Johnny in mid lane as well. Will surely be looking for a flank here. But he walks over a ward and they find the engage. Hawk the execute is timed perfectly. And the mid laner's taken out first in this fight. But look at Johnny. He is behind the entire enemy team. And Rapio has found a double execute on to the members of Hex Mambo. While Johnny picks up the ADC and is looking for more. A triple for Rapio. And Julio has to clean it up with a double kill of his own. And all of a sudden, a three for three leaves Spudio and Julio fighting wow. for their lives. Just barely enough damage, and Spudio grabs a double of his own. A deep How do we stick to the carries? How do we get in there and stick to them? You don't have the initiation consistently. Kana, oh my. Sunder connects. He's just dead. Easy pickup for Spudio. Kana, what are you doing so far up, bud? That early in the game, and then Johnny makes it happen here? Destruction channel. He'll get out with a pick. And out of nowhere, it is a two for zero in favor of the Mambo. And that's going to make room for them around this enhanced Fire Giant. They may not even be done yet. It will be a back for Johnny as he is now on his way back towards this enhanced Fire Giant. But with three members still on the map, I would be remiss if, if Niflheim Works didn't at least try to contest this objective. Still holding on to that runic bomb in their pockets and Gunter and Preds linked up here as Julio is on zone duty. This is falling slow though. It's only Cudio and Kha'Zix on the fight, but Rapio gets caught as well. It is three picks in a row. And with that, the rest of the wards have to back off. 
Hex Mambo, clean. This pick-based late-game composition paying for itself in dividends here. The Niflheim Wargs struggling to find footing on the map. The only way I can see them finding that footing is grouping up his five, and they miss that first critical hurdle. And instead, it's Hex Mambo who cleanly sweep the map, take Fire Giant for all five, enhanced, by the way, and start to knock on the door of the Titan. 30 seconds, the Wargs have to play without their jungler. 5v4 here, and they do have a minion wave a couple seconds behind them as they push under this middle Phoenix. A triple stun there for the support, and that enables John. He's in on the mid laner. Can't do nobody that. Nobody can help Gunter. It's just the Aegis, but Johnny will find the pick, and he's still alive in the back line. That makes room for Hawk. He grabs Preds, and they grab the middle Phoenix as well. It's just the two members remaining, and they do not have enough to stop it the push down hex mambo take game one hex mambo they wrote up this script 33 minutes ago hang on tight just wait it out get to the late game and we win every single time i mean you can see the confidence of the booth throwing up a thumbs up to the other side you played in my hand perfectly say hex mambo if the wargs want to win they're gonna have to throw them off tilt there's got to be something you can do getting johnny off a of collie that's step one surely sure. get rid of that Otherwise, I mean, even just looking at the damage output, it wasn't entirely Johnny. Johnny.